I got something to say, though it might be contentious. Controversy is me, my opinions are relentless. I know sometimes spitting this fire, I'm too vicious. I don't care what nobody said, I think ice cream is delicious. And this pup is cute. Sticky nose convenient. I said peanut butter good with jelly boy, you better know what I mean. And the ocean's big, ocean big. and the water soft. Yeah. Think you can handle these hot takes? Man, your brain is false. Drop a true bump, drop a true bump, drop a true bump, drop a true bump. Steph Curry good at basketball, and so with the run. I'm the only one brave enough brave to enough. put this in their song. You say Pluto was a planet? Well, astronomically, you're wrong. That's a hot take, that's a hot take, that's a hot take. Call the fire marshal up or throw it in the lake. Grab a oven mitt for your ears just to keep them safe. For my hot takes, for my hot takes, for my hot, hot takes. That's a bold word, that's a bold word, that's a bold word. You don't need a Q-tip, boy, you know what you heard. That's a pop man, that's a pop man, it just got stirred. By my bold words, by my bold words, by my bold, bold words. Now I'm coming in hot. A volcano on a missile. missile. My words make you bristle. bristle. Pump you up like a chisel. And though your love for me may be about to fizzle, I don't care if you're critical. It's time to get political. Ooh. You should probably vote. Nuclear war is bad. Republicans are elephants. Don't get Democrats. Russia starts with an R. R. I ain't afraid to say it. No. You should stand or kneel or squat or lay down for the anthem when they play it. Climate change is real, True. unless it's really not. Uh -huh. And the earth is flying around, and the sun is hot. And the president, his last name is Trump. Taking pictures with a tablet just makes you look like a chump. Take a bold stand, take a bold stand, take a bold stand. King Cobra's in the middle school, Man. should probably be banned. Haters say, don't know why they call me MC Bland. When I'm out on the limb, saying Hitler was not a nice man. That's a hot take, that's a hot take. Roast a marshmallow or you can bake a cake. Hit you in the head like you stepping on a rake. You can't handle all my hot takes, my hot takes, my hot takes. That's a bold thought, that's a bold thought. When I speak my mind, people want to fight me in the lot. And if the Bison was a team, I'd be the mascot. With my bold thoughts, with my bold thoughts, with my bold thoughts. Welcome to Bible study and uh, tonight we're going to be starting a new series and uh, we're going to try to work on this series going through the rest of summer. We're going to be looking in the book of Nehemiah. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn to uh, Nehemiah chapter one. We're going to be looking at the story of Nehemiah and how that might um, reflect into our lives today and kind of where we are in our situation, right? And so uh, this series we're going to call Return. Uh, Nehemiah is a, is a book about how Nehemiah returns to Israel. He returns to Jerusalem, but not only that, but he's returning uh, the, the state, the, the spiritual state of the people there in Jerusalem, in Israel, back to uh, a focus on who God is and what God wants to do through them. And so that's what we're going to be talking about um, going through the rest of the summer and just kind of looking at Nehemiah's story and how that reflects into to our lives. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I want you, as we go through this series, to just really think about uh, how you fit into Nehemiah's shoes. Uh, compare your story to Nehemiah's story. Compare your situation where you are right now to Nehemiah's story and, and where he is uh, as we go through this this uh, story. And so just a couple of things we want to look at as, uh, as we start into this book of Nehemiah, a little background information, is that uh, Nehemiah, he lived in an unsettled time. Uh, Nehemiah, he was part of uh, the Persian Empire. He was Jewish. He was uh, of the Jewish lineage. His family was all Jewish and lived in Israel. But um, during the, the time of the war, the Babylonians came and they took over and they took all of the, the young men and the young women away from Israel and brought them into uh, Babylon to become 
their servants, to become their slaves. They kind of made them come in and adopt all of their uh, religion, all of their beliefs, all of their culture, right? And so if you read through the book of Daniel, you'll see a lot of that take place. Daniel was a part of that group that was, was taken away from Israel, brought into Babylon. And uh, as we see through the book of Daniel, uh, several empires kind of took over uh, one after the other. So after the Babylonians, uh, another one took over, and another one took over, and another one took over to the point where we get to uh, to the Persians. And that's when we find uh, the story of Nehemiah, that Nehemiah was uh, part of the, the Persian Empire in the service of King Artaxerxes. And so you may have heard the story of the King Xerxes in the book of Esther. Uh, Artaxerxes would be possibly either the son or grandson of Xerxes. And so uh, there's a possible connection um, between Nehemiah and Esther. Uh, There's kind of a little bit of an overlap there, possibility. We don't know for sure, but the Jewish uh, ancient writings that come from the Talmud would suggest that Esther was actually a queen that was mentioned in the book of uh, Nehemiah. So uh, kind of depends on how true all that is. Uh, we don't know for sure, but um, Jewish heritage, Jewish um, legacy would suggest that Esther is connected. So it's pretty cool that, that we read through that. But um, eventually the, the king of Persia, he, he sent the Jews back to Israel. Um, but when they went back, they kind of struggled with how they get back to normal. And that's where we are today. That's where we are in this time is as some of our social distancing and some of our quarantine and that kind of stuff is starting to relax. And, you know, the people are wandering out more and trying to get out and do things and go shopping and see people as all, all these things are starting to kind of go back to normal. We're kind of looking at what is the new normal, right? You hear that term a lot, the new normal. Uh, what is the new normal for us? How are things going to be normal again, right? Is it going to go right back to the way it was before? Doubtful, right? Are there going to be new things that we do, new customs that we have? Are there going to be new things that come along the way? Probably. And so the, the Jewish people during this time, they struggled with that. They were returning back to, to Israel. There were some that still lived there that didn't go with the, uh, with the rest of them when they were all taken into exile. And so they're back in Israel trying to hold on to what once was. And then we have the others that are returning back with new culture and new ideas and new belief systems that are trying to intermingle back into uh, Israel. And so there's just this conflict of what is normal, what is right, what is good. And so uh, it was a struggle for them back then. It's going to be a struggle for us um, in these days, right? There's people that have just kind of gotten away from the habits that we had before, right? Or the things that we just took for granted before. And some of those things have been chipped away. And so now we're going back with new perspective, new uh, habits, new ways of doing things. So uh, no one no one back then really knew exactly what to do. And today, uh, a lot of us really don't know exactly how things are going to work out or what we're going to do. So Nehemiah, he was Jewish, uh, but he served as the cupbearer under the Persian king Artaxerxes, as we mentioned. And Nehemiah was trusted by the king to test the food, to test his drinks, to make sure there was no poison there, which is a a big job, right? You got to be the person to test the food to make sure nobody's trying to poison the king. So if somebody's trying to poison the king, you're going to die first. Great job. Sounds like it's a very, very lucrative job, actually. So uh, so, there's a possibility of lots of things that could happen there, right? But that was Nehemiah's job. And so, so one day, uh, Nehemiah, he met some men as they returned back from Jerusalem, and he wanted to get an update on how things were going. How are the people faring? How are the people doing getting back to their homeland, the promised land that God had given to them through Abraham and all the way through through Moses, right? How how are the people doing, right? And uh, how are the he asked, how are the people who remain in Israel while we were exiled? We see that in verse three. Uh, the, the, the answer comes, he says, the, rem- the remnant there in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and the gates are destroyed by fire. So 
so Nehemiah, he's hoping to get some good news, a good report on how things are going. Everybody's just going right back to the way it was before and everything's going great. But in fact, uh, things were not going great. Things were not going good. And so uh, that was a struggle. That was a struggle for Nehemiah, the report that he got uh, from them.